Hey everyone, today we're diving into the world of IP Multimedia Subsystem, or IMS, and specifically looking at the roles of three key players that make it all work. Think of IMS as the backbone for delivering multimedia services like voice and video over the internet. It's what makes modern communication possible. These CSCFs, or call session control functions, are like traffic controllers, ensuring everything runs smoothly. Let me introduce you to the three main players. Just like traffic controllers at a busy intersection, each CSCF has a specific role in managing the flow of communication signals. Together, these three components work seamlessly during the IMS registration process. The PCSCF is your device's first contact point, the ICSCF finds the right service manager, and the SCSCF manages your services and handles authentication. In the following sections, we'll break down each role in detail and walk through the complete registration flow step by step. Let's explore the PCSCF, which stands for Proxy Call Session Control Function. This is a crucial component in the IMS network architecture. The PCSCF is the very first server your device encounters when trying to connect to the IMS network. Think of it like a friendly receptionist at the front desk of a building. When your device wants to register with the IMS network, it sends its first message directly to the PCSCF. The PCSCF has four main functions. First, it forwards your registration requests to the appropriate servers deeper in the IMS network. Second, the PCSCF inspects every single signaling message that passes through it. It sits directly on the communication path, examining each message for security and proper routing. Third, it handles user authentication to prevent malicious attacks like spoofing and replay attacks. This protects both your privacy and the network's security. Finally, it establishes an IPsec security association with your device. This creates an encrypted communication channel that ensures all messages between your device and the network are protected. Here's the key takeaway. The PCSCF serves as your device's initial gateway to the IMS network. It's the first server you encounter, and it handles all the essential security and routing functions needed to get you connected safely. Remember, just like a receptionist who greets you and directs you to the right place, the PCSCF welcomes your device to the IMS network and ensures everything is secure and properly routed. Now we meet the ICSCF, or Interrogating Call Session Control Function. Think of the ICSCF as your friendly directory assistance operator. It helps locate exactly where you need to go in the IMS network. The ICSCF sits strategically at the edge of the IMS network domain. This positioning is crucial because it acts as the entry point for incoming calls and requests from other networks. What makes the ICSCF discoverable is that its IP address is published in the DNS of the domain. This allows other servers from different networks to easily find it and forward SIP packets to the correct location. Here's where the ICSCF's detective work begins. When it receives a registration request, it queries the HSS, the home subscriber server, to determine which specific SCSCF should handle this particular user's account. The HSS responds by telling the ICSCF exactly which SCSCF is responsible for this user. Think of it like calling directory assistance and being told which specific department can help you with your request. An important evolution occurred from release 7 onwards. The entry point function of the ICSCF can now be part of the IBCF, the interconnection border control function. This enhancement provides additional NAT and firewall functions for better network security and connectivity. Remember this key takeaway. The ICSCF finds the right SCSCF for you. It acts as your network directory assistance, ensuring that your registration request reaches exactly the right service handler in the IMS network. Now we reach the most important component, the SCSCF, or Serving Call Session Control Function. Think of it as the service manager and the brains of the entire IMS operation. The SCSCF is always located in your home network. No matter where you are in the world, your SCSCF remains in your home carrier's network, managing your services and profile. One of the SCSCF's primary jobs is communicating with the HSS, or Home Subscriber Server. It downloads your complete user profile, including your services, preferences, and authentication information. The SCSCF also decides when to forward your requests to application servers. 
These servers provide specific services like voice calls, video calling, or messaging. The SCSCF acts like a smart traffic director. For high availability and load distribution, there can be multiple SCSCFs in a network. A load balancer distributes users across different SCSCFs to ensure no single server gets overwhelmed. To summarize, the SCSCF handles five critical functions in the IMS network. It authenticates users, manages their profiles, applies services, routes requests appropriately, and ensures system reliability through load balancing. The key takeaway is that the SCSCF acts as your personal service manager in the IMS network. It knows who you are, what services you have, and ensures you get the right experience every time you connect. Now let's walk through the complete IMS registration flow step by step. This process involves several network entities working together to authenticate and register your device. Step one, your device initiates the registration process by sending a register request to the PCSCF. This is the first point of contact in the IMS network. Step two, the PCSCF receives the request and forwards it to the ICSCF. The PCSCF discovers the ICSCF through DNS queries in the home network. Step three, the ICSCF needs to find the right SCSCF to handle this user. It queries the HSS database to determine which SCSCF should serve this particular user. Step four, after receiving the SCSCF information from the HSS, the ICSCF forwards the register request to the appropriate SCSCF that will handle this user's session. Step five, the SCSCF receives the registration request but needs to authenticate the user first. It sends a 401 unauthorized response with an authentication challenge back to the device. Step six, the device receives the challenge and calculates a response using its shared secret key. It sends a new register request with the authentication credentials back through the network. Step seven, the SCSCF validates the authentication response by checking with the HSS. If successful, it sends a 200 OK response back to the device, completing the registration process. This completes the IMS registration flow. Your device is now successfully registered and authenticated in the IMS network, ready to make and receive calls and messages through the IP multimedia subsystem. Now we reach a critical security step in IMS registration, the authentication challenge. This process ensures that only authorized users can access the network. The authentication challenge begins when the SCSCF sends a 401 unauthorized response back to your device. This response contains a special security token called a nonce. What exactly is a nonce? It stands for number used once, a unique random value that prevents replay attacks. Think of it like a one-time password that expires immediately after use. The PCSCF forwards this 401 response to your device. Your device now knows it needs to prove its identity using the nonce provided. Now comes the clever part. Your device has a shared secret key stored securely in its SIM card. It combines this secret key with the nonce using a cryptographic algorithm to calculate a response. Your device then sends a new register request containing this calculated response back through the PCSCF to the SCSCF. This proves your device knows the secret key without actually sending the key itself. Now the SCSCF must validate this response. It queries the HSS database to retrieve the same shared secret key that your device used. The HSS securely stores all user authentication credentials. The HSS sends back the secret key to the SCSCF. The SCSCF then performs the exact same calculation that your device did, combining the secret key with the nonce using the same algorithm. Finally, the SCSCF compares the response it calculated with the response your device sent. If they match perfectly, authentication succeeds, and your device is granted access to the IMS network. This authentication challenge mechanism is brilliant because it proves identity without ever transmitting the secret key over the network. Even if someone intercepts the messages, they cannot replay them because each nonce is used only once. Android 12 introduced a significant improvement to IMS with the single registration model. This development has made mobile communications more efficient and reliable than ever before. Before we dive into the single registration model, let's understand what MMTEL and RCS are. These are two key communication services that Android devices use. In the old dual registration model, Android devices had to register separately for MMTEL and RCS services. This meant two different IMS registrations happening at the same time. 
the new single registration model in Android 12 changed everything. Now both Mintel and RCS services are managed through just one IMS registration. This is much more efficient. This single registration approach brings three major benefits. First, it reduces network traffic because there's only one registration process instead of two. Second, it increases reliability by eliminating potential conflicts between separate registrations. Third, it improves overall performance by streamlining the communication process. The single registration model represents a major step forward in mobile communication efficiency. By unifying MMTEL and RCS under one registration, Android 12 has made our devices faster, more reliable, and easier on the network infrastructure. Let's wrap up our journey through IMS registration by reviewing the key roles and exploring exciting future developments in this rapidly evolving field. To recap our key players, PCSCF serves as your entry point and first contact. ICSCF acts as the locator finding the right SCSCF and SCSCF manages services and handles authentication. Now let's look ahead to the exciting future developments, transforming IMS technology. The future of IMS is incredibly exciting. We're seeing artificial intelligence and machine learning being integrated for smarter service delivery. Multi-access edge computing is bringing services closer to users, and augmented reality telephone communications are opening up entirely new possibilities. The numbers tell an impressive story about IMS growth. The IMS services market is experiencing tremendous growth, expected to reach $6.35 billion by 2028, with a compound annual growth rate of 16.7%. Thank you for joining me on this journey through IMS registration and CSCF roles. IMS technology continues to evolve rapidly, shaping the future of how we communicate. Keep exploring and learning about these fascinating technologies.